Hello and welcome to the Ignited of Church YouTube channel. I'm so glad that you're able to join us today. Please hit that subscribe button so that you can see all of our newest content coming up. Uh, like this video and like the ones to follow it. Um, it'd be really good if you're able to stick around and listen to our talk today. Uh, as it is Pentecost Sunday, we're going to be talking about baptism in the Spirit and what that means to the church. Enjoy the talk and I'll see you soon. <laughs> all that being said, hallelujah. Shall I pray quick and then I'm going to preach? Is that all right? You're like, you've already been preaching, Pastor. Please don't preach anymore. Lord, I thank you that today we are free. And that's a truth. That is the truth that we need to just get into our spirit. It's a truth that we need to proclaim daily. Lord, I thank you that your word says that essentially we're on a journey of freedom and a journey of becoming saved. Even though we made a commitment at some point in the past, we have to keep on being saved every day. That's what your word says. We need to continually be being saved. We need to continually be being set free. The work was done on the cross, and that's true. But we have to keep on choosing freedom in different areas of our lives. And so, Lord, I thank you for that reminder today. I thank you, God, that this is a process of freedom. For the people in this room today, I thank you, God, that You've got so much freedom planned for them. You've got so much love, so much joy, so much fullness planned for them. I know this because, God, you've done the same for me. So, Jesus, would you help us to know and feel freedom? Amen. Amen. Okay, so we're reading from the book of Acts, chapter 2, uh, because it is the day of Pentecost, okay? Is that cool? Today's the day of Pentecost. That's what we're celebrating. It says here, the heading for chapter 2 is the day of Pentecost. I oh, know. It's good, isn't it? Come on. It says, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. In some versions, it says that they all had one accord. They all had the same thought, the same mind. They all wanted the same thing. And suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues of fire distributing themselves. And they rested on each one of them. Okay? So imagine you're sitting in a room. You're there with a bunch of people just like you. There's about 70 to 100 of them. And you're literally just there thinking, God, we just need some direction right now. Like, we're desperately in need of you right now. We don't even know what's going on. You told us to wait, so we're waiting. And all of a sudden, there's a massive wind starts rushing around the place. And it literal, not figurative, not a joint vision, but a literal fire, little flame, came and rested on each of them. Now, where it rested, we don't know. It might have rested on their head, if you like the idea of being really conservative. Or if you're less conservative and more Pentecostal like me, then maybe they were totally on fire. Their whole bodies were covered in flame. Maybe. Oh, I like that. Okay. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. Yeah? And it says, Now there were Jews in Jerusalem, devout from every nation under heaven. And when the sound occurred, the crowd came together and bewildered because each one of them was hearing them speak in their own language. It goes on to say all the different languages that these guys could hear them speaking in, okay? And Peter essentially then preaches the gospel and says that these people have been filled with the Holy Spirit. This is the day that in church language, we say the church was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, in some churches, what they believe is that, and I think sometimes we've fallen into the habit of preaching this as well, that an individual person can be baptized in the Holy Spirit, which is true because a few chapters before this, we see in John's gospel, Jesus goes up to his disciples uh, as he's about to depart from them. And he goes up to them and he says, receive my spirit. And he breathes on them, which means that as individuals, they receive the Holy Spirit. But in this moment, 
A lot of theologians, a lot of people who study the Bible deeply say that this is the moment that the church is baptized in the Holy Spirit. The collective is baptized in the Holy Spirit rather than the individual. Okay? And as a result, there's a few things that happen, okay? So what does it mean to be baptized in the Spirit? So to be baptized in the Spirit, or, or, to, uh, or the word baptism means to saturate, okay? So when we do baptisms in water, we literally take you all the way under the water, usually in a hot tub or something like that. We take you all the way under the water, and, uh, and your whole body, your face, your hair, and everything is totally covered in water, okay? Now, to be saturated means to be filled with water all the way through, right? So if you, uh, if you were to get a sponge, okay, if you were to get a dry sponge, a, a brand new sponge, and dip it in some water and then pull it back out, it'd probably be a bit damp on the outside, but it wouldn't be wet on the inside, would it? I'm not sure you've ever done that. However, if you were to squeeze it under the water and then let it go under the water, the sponge sucks in all of the water, doesn't it? So when the sponge is wet all the way through, that's when we say it is saturated, Yeah? So the word saturated is the word baptism. Okay, so I'm not sure whether you've ever done that. You guys done that when you're like washing a car or something like that? And then you pull the sponge out of the water and what happens with the water? It just goes everywhere, doesn't it? Yeah? Yeah? Now there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when the sound occurred, the crowd came together and were bewildered because each one of them was hearing them speak in his own language. They were amazed and astonished, saying, Why are not all these all speaking Galileans? And how can we all hear them in our own language? And they continued in amazement and great perplexity, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others were mocking them, saying, uh, They're full of sweet wine. But Peter taking his stand with the eleven, raised his voice and declared to the men of Judah and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give heed to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. And it shall be on the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all of mankind." And so in this moment, they're filled in a room like this. The, the, the Spirit comes upon the church, and the church overflows with the Spirit into the neighborhood. And so, and so there's a few things that we need to acknowledge here. Number one is that we don't often pray enough for our church to be baptized in the Spirit as a community. Yeah? Because in our culture, we're all mad individualistic, right? And so we always say, God fill me, or God fill her, or God fill him. We very rarely, in fact, I don't think I've ever heard it said or prayed, God baptize our community in your Holy Spirit. And that is what we see just here. God baptizing the church community, hello, in the Holy Spirit. And so today, this is what I think we should and could pray for if we believe that this is what we need. Because the evidence says that maybe we're missing it. Like maybe we're missing it. Maybe. Um, maybe we all love Jesus and we really committed to him and really on fire for him and we've been filled with the, in, with, with the Holy Spirit as individuals and so we're doing good things in the neighborhood and stuff like you're out mowing someone's lawn or whatever, that's great, you know? That stuff's good. But maybe actually the presence of God's Holy Spirit isn't as powerful and isn't as flowing as what we see just here in our congregation. Do you understand what I'm saying? What's the evidence for that? Well, usually when God's Spirit turns up, amazing things happen. All the way through uh, the Gospel of Luke, whenever God's Spirit turns up, something happens. Someone might prophesy. Okay? Someone might get healed. Even at the very first moment when, when 
Jesus, Jesus' mum, pregnant mum with Jesus, walks near her auntie, I think it is, or a cousin. Um, John's little body inside his mum jumps, jumps at the, at the closeness of Jesus while still in the womb. Right? So Jesus comes nearby, presumably with Holy Spirit too, because Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary, and suddenly there's a jump in a little tiny baby still inside the womb. Right? Crazy, right? Um, so all the way through to then, you know, when, when Jesus rocks up at the synagogue, then Simeon suddenly starts prophesying. And then someone else prophesies, and someone else. Pro- Whenever Holy Spirit is there, something always happens. And so the evidence is, if there's nothing happening in between us, and if there's no flow of power between us, then maybe our community needs baptizing in the Holy Spirit. Right? Makes sense, doesn't it? I might pray and someone might get healed, but you might pray or, you know, there was once upon a time in, uh, and, you know, this story's in this magazine this week where, where young Matthew just walked into the back of a church service and was just healed. He says someone prayed for him. I remember that day really well. No one prayed for him, right? But because people do pray for each other in church, I think he remembers someone praying for him. But no one prayed for him. He just stood at the back of church. And in God's presence in a church that had Holy Spirit flowing through it, like through individuals but also through the community, he just got healed and was no longer deaf, you know? And we see that all the time. The amount of people who come into church and they will... Uh, they will sometimes like just come and sit down and then all of a sudden I'm not sure if it's the music or whether it's God's presence or whatever it is but then someone just starts like they get a bit tearful and they start having a bit of a cry and they're like what's even happening to me right now I remember once I was in there I was in a little chapel um in Malvern and I had put some songs on in the background and I was just fasting and praying for like 24 hours and I was laying down on the floor and uh, and no one else knew that I was in there and so as far as they knew, there was some music happening, but they couldn't see anyone because I was sort of around a corner. And I heard them come in the door, uh, sort of around a corner from me. And, uh, and I heard them say, oh, what's that feeling? <laughs> what, what's that in the atmosphere? And then, I start, and, and then they started like going, oh, I feel like God's here. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. You know what I mean? Like, goosebumps all over my flesh right now. Uh, but they, they just started like... Like, and it's so funny because they had no idea that I could hear what they were saying. And, uh, and they just, like, they came round and then obviously they saw me laying there and they were like, oh, hello, Darren, you're right. Um, and I was just, like, really, really impressed that I might not have felt like mad on fire or something, but I knew that God was in the room. And then when someone else came into the room, they felt his presence too. And so together as a community, we were encountering him together, you know? And so what I would like is for our church just here to have that same atmosphere. You know, so when people come in uh, to the library on a Tuesday or a Thursday, when they walk through those doors, they feel the overflow of the Spirit. You know, so people come into the library and then they're like, I'm looking for, you know, um, uh, you know, Fifty Shades of Grey and end up going out going, I need a Bible. You know, like... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. I just felt like, you know what I mean? Like, like something happened when I entered that space. No one spoke to me. No one did anything. But there's something about the space and the community that meets here that the overflow of that is power and grace and love. And so I think we need to do that. I think we need to pray for that, for the Holy Spirit to baptize us as a community here in Birchwood. I think the outworking of that will be things like people coming in here and just finding God. I think that will happen anyway. You know, I think that's what will happen. I also think that, I also think that as we pray together for the, for the baptism of the Holy Spirit for our church community, for us as a congregation, one of the things that will happen is we'll suddenly need to feel like we're going outside and 
like the, we would see the outworking of the Spirit in our community, surrounding our community. You know, that um, maybe people would start seeing little miracles in the streets, you know, like I'd, I'm desperate for miracles to start happening in the streets around here, but that's not going to happen unless some of us go out there and pray for folks. I went up to a bloke the other day in the street and I was like, hello, sir, can I interest you in a flyer like this? I, I, was, I was out delivering these, I think I was on Moreland Avenue, and I saw this fellow, he had like pipes in his nose and stuff, and like, he obviously had like lung cancer or something like that going on, his, his lungs were really bad. Um, and uh, and it, it was really struggling get, to get up the street. And I was like, man, like, it's not okay for me to let that guy just walk up the street and get away uh, from God's presence, you know, like this guy needs prayer. So, I, and I had to really suck it up, you know, because I haven't done that for so long. I haven't just gone up to some random geezer on the street and prayed for him for ages. And so, uh, and so I thought, I know what I'll do. I will offer him one of my flyers. And if he's open to the flyer, then I'll, I'll say, can I pray for you? So I went over there and I was like, sir, um, please can I give you a flyer? And said, no, leave me alone. So I thought, I better not ask him if I could pray for him then. Um, but, um, <laughs> but, but this is just it, right? Like we, we have all these different ways in which we can do that. But the point is that for a long time, in all honesty, because we don't have enough volunteers here, I find myself stuck in this building and in the other building uh, waiting for someone to come and take over my role so I can go out into the community and do what I'm naturally good at. But in the meantime, I think that if our community, our church community is baptized in the Holy Spirit and us guys as a community get that and get that same fire, then maybe things like this would come quite naturally to all of us, just a little bit more. Because what happened in the day of Pentecost is... As soon as the Spirit came, everyone rushed out of the building, didn't they? Right? And they didn't go out there, interestingly, they didn't go out there like, hey, we're going to like mow lawns and decorate houses and, and that sort of stuff, which is quite cool. We can do that. That's lovely. We can do that loads. Um, they didn't go out there to do loads of social justice. I'm not sure if you noticed. They just went out there speaking in tongues. You know what I mean? That, that, I, I think that would be really weird in our community if we all just went outside right now and started shouting out in tongues. You know, I think people would be like, what is going on? Right? Uh, this is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they'll be ringing PHC up, wouldn't they? Like, uh, and, and getting us registered, you know? Um, but, but, <laughs> but the truth is that actually, in my experience, I remember once I was in London and, uh, and I was doing like a, uh, a week of intense sort of evangelistic training and one of my friends called Mark who texted me yesterday actually uh, was uh, is a bit like you know fiery you know like he used to be a cage fighter so like black belt in ninjutsu and all sorts of stuff he used to do like European competitions so when you're with Mark you're never scared of anything you know so uh, and but he's he's also not scared of anything so we're walking um, we're walking through Kensington High Street and Mark turns around and says Darren that fella right there God just told me that he's trying to get girls to come, uh, get girls to come up into his, uh, his flat so that they can make dirty videos. So I said, how do you know that, dude? And that's a bit out there. You know what I mean? And he said, well, God just told me that, so I'm going to go over there and challenge him. Is that all right? I'm like, ah, like, what the heck, mate? I'm like, you can't just go up to people and do that. So, uh, so I'm like, I better go over there anyway because if he ends up getting hurt, then I'd like to be able to carry him to the ambulance, you know? So, um, so... Uh, so I go over there with him, and he turns around to this fellow. He says, God knows what you're doing. I'm like, whoa, dude, what the heck? And he says, God knows that you're trying to get young ladies to go up into your flat to make dirty videos, right? And this fellow turns around and says, so what? I'm like, ah! Right? I'm like, what? And, and so Mark says, you need to stop it right now. And this fellow goes, no. So I'm like, what? So what are you going to do now, Mark? He says, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and down the street speaking in tongues. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, you do that. That's fine. I turn around to the fellow and I say, do you mind if I pray for you? You know, like, can I just pray for you? And he's, and he's like, who's that nutter? I'm like, oh, he's just a friend. Um, you know, and, and Mark's, Mark's, up and down the street and I'm like gosh so I, t <laughs> I say to this guy listen I want to pray for you right? and um, I go to put my hand on his chest and he, and he jerks back like this gangster sort of guy jerks back and he says, he says I'm scared I'm like why and he says I can feel your spirit and he says it's beautiful 
And I was like, ah, what a weird thing to say. Anyway, Mark carried on speaking in tongues, and then a bunch of old Bill turned up with like guns and stuff. And I was like, what's that? We're going to die. I, I literally tweeted. I said, please pray for us, everyone, because Mark's about to get us all killed. Um, you know, um, and as it happens, uh, there was a police station just behind where, the, where we were, and they just got back from the Israeli embassy uh, because, uh, because there's some sort of threat or something down there. But they all had these guns, and I was like, oh, my days. Like, I'm so scared right now. Mark's going to get me shot. Um, but here's the point, like, Mark was not shy, you know? And maybe he probably should have been a bit shy. But anyway, um, the point is that he wasn't shy. And he just went out in this. And he was literally, you know, that street is 24-7. It's always busy, you know? And he was going up and down and speaking in tongues. And I was like, I don't want to walk all that distance, mate. You know, I'm just going to stand there and pray for the guy. Um, But I think if we went out into the streets here, and just even just went and prayed for folks, or even if we did go out speaking in tongues, you know, like do, do a mark, like marching up and down the street, like, um, I have a feeling that actually people would be like, oh, you're speaking my language. Or, you know, as we pray for folks, they w- might turn around and say, I feel something different about you, you know? But as long as we're locked up in here, I'm not sure that much of that is going to happen, you know? As it happens on that same day, I was uh, I was uh, walking between these two like massive buildings, really tall buildings, and I uh, I saw this young lad, uh, sort of just as we were exiting this alleyway. I saw this young lad. And I said, "Excuse me, young man, do you want if I pray for you?" And he said, "He said, why?" And I said, uh, "I said, well, because like I want to pray for your finances and for your healing." And, it, and usually when you say, I want to pray for your finances, people are like, yeah, right. And, um, so uh, so I said that. And so I start praying for him. And uh, and as I'm praying for him, I'm obviously, obviously prophesying as I pray because that's what I do. And uh, and then he's like, thank you so much. As I said, amen. So me and Mark then go walking down the street again. And I hear this little pitter patter of footsteps coming after me and Mark. And I'm like, oh, no. This is it. We're going to get stabbed and die in an alleyway in London because I prayed for someone. It's okay. I'm going to go meet Jesus. And uh, and it's this young lad. And he, co- he runs up and Mark's like, what do you want? And uh, and I'm like, no, Mark, calm down. Uh, and then, uh, and then, <laughs> and then he, he turns around and he says, he says, um, he says, when you were praying for me, I could feel your spirit. And it's beautiful. I was like, that's what the other guy said. He said, um, "He said, I really need to know more about Jesus. How did you know all that stuff about my life as you were praying? And I was like, Jesus was just telling me what to pray. And he says, wow. He says, I need to know more about Jesus. So me and Mark, we, um, we gave him some gospel tracts and some information and a leaflet for the local church. And that guy went off and we prayed for his salvation and stuff like that. And we believe that he got saved. You know, I don't know whether that's true. Uh, whether we carried on going to church or not, you know. But the point here is that sometimes even the stupidest, craziest things can make you realize that God's really with you. And I'm not sure that God is totally okay with us just sitting here and drinking coffee on a Sunday. I think maybe he wants more of us, a little bit more of us anyway. I think it starts with our community, not as individuals, but as a community being baptized in the Holy Spirit, like it says just here. The church was baptized in the Spirit. Maybe our church can be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And as a result, maybe there'll be a flow that happens between us, even when we're on opposite sides of the estate or on opposite sides of the town, and there's a flow. And other people get caught up in that, maybe, is what I believe. If we pray for this today, which I'm going to ask you if you'd like us to pray for this. Um, If we pray for this today, then there are obviously lots of ways that we can go and just get started on doing stuff on the estate. Like like I said, we've got these flyers, really easy. Post these through doors if you're a little bit shy. Really easy to do, isn't it, you know? Um, I, uh, I like to stop and speak to people because I know that when I pray for folks, stuff happens. 
Um, we also have this magazine. We have 100, 200 of these magazines, and so I could give each of you like five of these, and you can just like feel the spirit of God in you, directing you towards five specific doors to post one through. You know, rather than just posting them in every door, we can go, Spirit of God, who's going to really value this? You know, I once did that with um, I made these DVDs. And each DVD had five or six testimonies on it, like Hindu becomes Christian, you know, uh, and, uh, and Muslim becomes Christian, and then Darren becomes Christian. Um, you know, that was on there as well, obviously, because I had my own one, you know. Um, but anyway, there's like, I, did, I ended up like copying this DVD, like, I don't know, uh, maybe 200 times or something. And then I put them into a nice DVD case, and then I, uh, I went and did this thing where I just went around, you know, God, which door do you want me to post this through today? On lots of different estates in our city, and I just, like, posted, like, 100, 200 of these DVDs through people's doors, you know, with a little flyer that said, I want to pray for you. Another thing that I did uh, as an early young Christian was, and my pastor said, what did you do that for when I did it? But he did ask me to do it. Um, I was like, pastor, I want to go out and tell people about Jesus. And he says, what you need to do first is you need to write a letter to all of your neighbors with your, t- with your story on it of how you became a Christian. So I was like, okay then, brilliant. So I wrote a letter and I went and posted it all around my neighbor's doors. And at the end of it, it said my address and that they could uh, post uh, the, the prayer request through my door if they wanted to. And then I went to my pastor, I said, I did it. And he said, what do you mean you did it? I said, I did it. I wrote the letter. I printed it off and I posted it all through my neighbor's doors. And he was like, I don't want you to post it through the neighbor's doors. That's really dangerous. Um, you know, like, um, <laughs> and I was like, well, you, you didn't say that. So I just assumed that's what I had to do, you know. Um, but, um, but, you know, I, I do things like that, you know, all the time. My point here is that if, if we're filled as a community with a spirit, I'm sure God might do something in us and encourage us to be just that, not outgoing, I'm not saying you need to change your personality, but I think that hopefully as a result of us as a community being filled with the Holy Spirit, people might feel the Holy Spirit in the space, in the room, when they enter this space, but also there'd be something that drives us, like it did here, just to be a bit more like, hey, by the way, we we exist, you know? So let me ask you, church, um, Ignite Church on Birchwood, would you guys think it's a good idea for us to pray that God would baptize us as a community in his Holy Spirit? We can do individual baptism another day. You know, that's cool. We can do that. But is it a good idea for us to do a community, a communal baptism of the Holy Spirit? Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. How we do that, I don't know. Shall we? Um, yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm just, you know, I'm not making it up as I go. I've been thinking about it loads. But, um, well, Jesus is the high priest, and he says that he is the one who baptizes us in the Holy Spirit. So maybe that could be our prayer Jesus, you baptize us as a community today. Yeah? Mm. Yeah. Maybe, um, I don't really fancy holding everyone's hands, but um, I've got oil, but um, maybe we could put that on some doors and stuff at some point. Yeah, we could do some of that as well, can't we? Come on. There's lots of things that we can do. In fact, I usually take holy oil to people's homes when they're like, can you get these demons out of my house? And I'll take some holy oil with me and, and do all that sort of stuff. I say holy oil, it's just oil, anointing oil. Mm. Sage. Uh, that's probably more witchcraft than Holy Spirit, but we can discuss that sometime. Well, like I say, this is probably an old wives' tower rather than what it says in the Bible, but yeah, we can uh, we can chat about that sometime. It's funny, there's a lady once came in here, she's like, I oh, know how to stop the spirits getting in here, put some salt across the front door, and I was like, I was like, yeah, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that light casts out darkness. And so just by inviting Jesus and his light into the room, you know, so maybe that's the key. Maybe we need to ask Holy Spirit and his light to come into the room, but also into us as a community, you know? And Birchwood as a community. We could pray that too, shall we? Yeah? Cool. And then we'll worship again. Would you like another song?
Or are you like, it's already late? Yeah, we can. Walking around a building, praying. Yeah, we can do all these things, can't we? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe actually what we could do is we could have some worship going on and then, like if I pray just now for us, for us as a community to be filled with his Holy Spirit and then maybe uh, maybe if someone's up for walking around the building and praying for the building to be filled with the light of God and then maybe if another person wants to go and just pray on pray for the seating that we have here where people normally sit, you know. Yeah, we could pray some doorways. I can give some of you guys some anointing oil and you can put a bit on the doorways and stuff if you fancy some of that. We can do it all, can't we, whilst we're sort of singing as we go. Is that cool? Yeah. yeah. Okay. In that case, let's um let's stand for a moment and pray and get our legs working again and get rid of that numbum for anyone who's got a numbum. <laughs> anyone got a numbum? Yeah. Um Father, right now I, I want to pray, Lord, that you would pour out your spirit upon our church community. Lord, that this church would be baptized in your Holy Spirit. And Lord, that we would see the outworking of that, both in the room and also outside of the room. That there would be an overflow into our neighborhood. That there would be an overflow even into our city and into our region. Lord, that people would encounter you whenever they are near us. People would even say, oh, it feels like I'm with Jesus when I'm with you, Mitch. When I'm with you, Debbie. Lord, I pray right now that by your power, by your spirit, you'd pour out your love your spirit, your Holy Spirit, into our community. And Lord, as we go around our little building just here and try to honor you with our actions in this prayer moment, I pray, God, that you would honor us with your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. So I'm going to put some songs on. Who'd like to do some anointing oil on door frames? You want to do some of that? There you go. Who'd like to walk around a building and pray? Anyone up for that? Yeah? Anyone up for like praying for seating areas? Anyone up for doing that? Yeah? Who's up for going and praying God come into this space in the kids' room? Would you be up for that? Yeah? Yeah, cool. Lovely. And Barbara, what, how, would you like to pray for the cafe? You up for that? Just go over there and say, Holy Spirit, come into this space, yeah? You up for that? And in the meantime, there'll be some songs going, and I'll give you some oil, okay? Let's, let's do our thing. Come on. Hey, wasn't that a good talk? I'm so glad that I was able to bring that to you. In fact, I learned so much as I was researching what I was going to talk about and all that sort of stuff. I really enjoyed it. I hope that you managed to get out into your community this week and, and share the good news of Jesus and that you're able to overflow into your community. Why don't you hit that subscribe button so that you can join in with all of the different things that we're uploading. In fact, if you hit a little bell button on the video, then what will happen is you'll be able to get a notification each time that we introduce something or, or go live or anything like that every time we upload something. In the meantime, though, I hope you have a blessed rest of the week. See you soon.